let's look at how to calculate the clock frequency. The clock period should accommodate the propagation delay of the circuit, setup time and hold time. So mostly in case of flip-flop, we consider clock to Q delay instead of hold time. How we calculate the propagation delay? We consider the logic for all the stages, fetch, decode, execute, memory and write back. And then we are going to consider which one is maximum. So overall, the propagation delay is the maximum value of one of the propagation delays. So clock period equal to setup time plus propagation delay of the processor plus hold time. Remember, when it comes to multi-stage pipeline processor, we are going to consider the maximum delay of one of the stages, not all the delays. That's how we try to reduce the clock period. If we can reduce the clock period, obviously it's going to improve the clock frequency. So in this case, RISC-V performance in terms of frequency, it's going to be one by T clock and we need to maintain CPI as one. That's where we need to look at how to fill the pipeline stages so that we can execute things in parallel. Let's look at different scenarios so that we can understand the impact of frequency and CPI. There are five stages, fetch, decode, execute, memory and write back. The propagation delay of fetch is one nanosecond, decode one nanosecond, execute takes two nanosecond, memory one and write back one nanosecond. If we consider no pipeline and by default CPI is one, T clock is the sum of all the propagation delays. There is no pipeline. So we need to add all the propagation delays. Also, we need to consider setup time and hold time. So together setup time and hold time, one nanosecond and remaining delays, fetch, decode, execute, memory and write back six nanosecond together plus setup time and hold time overall seven nanosecond. And five stage pipeline processor, yes, but the CPI has become five. Let's see the impact. T clock, is maximum of one of the delays. So which one is maximum? Execution stage, which is nothing but two, and setup time and hold time, one nanosecond, two plus one, three nanosecond overall. And if you consider one million instructions, number of instructions multiplied by clock period, in this case, seven nanosecond, and CPI is one, so overall seven millisecond. But the five stage pipeline processor is going to take 15 millisecond, which is not good. So we need to reduce CPI. CPI should be one. If we consider three stage processor, instead of trying five stage, why don't we try three stage and every instruction is going to take three clock cycles. So eventually CPI is going to be three, then what would happen? No pipeline, CPI is one considering all the delays and setup time and hold time overall seven nanosecond clock period is seven nanosecond for three stage pipeline processor CPI is three and we are going to consider the maximum delay of one of the propagation delays in this case only three stages so we are combining fetch and decode that's going to be stage one and stage two execute and stage three is going to be memory and write back. So you can also think of creating three stage pipeline processor. So in this case, only three stages and still we are going to consider only the maximum delay. So the maximum delay still, it's going to be two nanosecond and setup time and hold time one nanosecond, two plus one overall three nanosecond. If you consider one million instructions, the regular processor without pipeline, it's going to take seven millisecond and three stage pipeline processor, still it's going to take nine millisecond because CPI is more. But if you make CPI as one, multi-stage pipeline processor will always be better than the regular processor. Look at this. 
case one, no pipeline, regular processor, clock period is sum of all the propagation delays plus setup time and hold time. So considering all the stages, overall the delay is going to be 6 nanosecond plus setup time and hold time, the clock period is going to be 7 nanosecond. For 5 stage pipeline processor, we are going to consider the maximum propagation delay. In this case, execute stage. So overall, 2 nanosecond propagation delay plus setup time and hold time, it becomes 3 nanosecond. Here, CPI is 1 for both. So considering 1 million instructions, the regular processor is going to take 7 millisecond, but 5 stage pipeline processor is going to take only 3 millisecond. It's huge. If you consider 1 billion instructions, the regular processor is going to take 7 seconds and 5 stage pipeline processor is going to take only 3 seconds. If you consider 10 billion instructions, for example, if it is going to be a cloud server, then the comparison could be like 70 seconds versus 30 seconds. The regular processor is going to take 70 seconds, but the five stage pipeline processor is going to take only 30 seconds. So both clock frequency and CPI, they will have huge impact on CPU runtime. 